morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to worship. Um, just some folks to keep in our prayers. Recently, you may have heard, I know that he was connected to our congregation. Um, Bill Chisholm passed away, and his family wanted us all to know that. So we're holding them in prayer. And also, Betty Chisholm is now in the hospital and would like our prayers. So we keep that family especially in our prayers. And this past week, Mary the Young's father passed away. So Mary, you are now our prayer as well. Um, we've got New Members Sunday. Um, just because of January and different things going on, we don't have, not all of our new members are able to be there uh, here, but we're excited to have them. So we've got a couple of them here, and it's a great way to start off the new year. So we welcome you. We're so glad that you are here with us. We've got our council meeting this Thursday at 6 o'clock, and then the annual meeting is coming up on January 30th. Reports, can people find those at what time? Um, they will be available next Sunday. Okay, sounds good. And next we'll Sunday. email them, and I will have some printed copies also in case you like want to have that paper. Okay. And the annual meeting is January 30th, directly following service in the public. Thank you. So worship, we're doing just a little bit different. We cut down on some of the singing. Um, the Synod has given us some direction to be careful for the next few weeks. So we're doing that. So you'll notice we're not singing quite as much. We're still going to be doing communion walk up in the way that we have. If you prefer to have the prepackaged you don't want the actual bread, um, we've got, we'll have that basket up there so that you can take it that way. So you can just take it and we'll still say the words to you. Um, with that, we begin with an order of confession and forgiveness. Please rise. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God, who creates us, redeems us, and calls us by name. Amen. Most merciful God, we confess that we have sinned against you and your beloved children. We have turned our faces away from your glory when it did not appear as we expected. We have rejected your word when it made us confront ourselves. We have failed to show hospitality to those who called us to welcome, accept our repentance for the things we have done and the things we have not done. For the sake of Jesus Christ, have mercy on us. Forgive us and lead us, that we may bathe in the glory of your Son born among us, and reflect your love for all creation. Amen. Rejoice in this good news. In Christ Jesus, your sins are forgiven. You are descendants of the Most High, adopted into the household of Christ, and inheritors of eternal life. Live as freed and forgiven children of God. Amen. Our gathering song is number 396. We will sing verse 1.
also with you. We pray the prayer of the day together. Let us pray. Almighty God, you are to Jesus and his baptism with the Holy Spirit and reveal to him as your beloved Son. Keep all who are born of water and of the Spirit faithful in your service, that we may rejoice to be called children of God through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. You may be seated and I invite the children. Israel, your Savior. 
I give Egypt as your ransom, Ethiopia, Ethiopia and Seba in exchange for you, because you are precious in my sight, and honored, and I love you. I give people in return for you, nations in exchange for your life. Do not fear, for I am with you. I will bring your offspring from the east, and from the west I will gather you. I will say to the north, give them up, and to the south, do not withhold. Bring my sons from far away, and my daughters from the ends of the earth. Everyone who is called by not my name, whom I created for my glory, whom I formed and made. We will read Psalm 29 responsibly. Ascribe to the Lord your gods. Ascribe to the Lord glory and strength. Ascribe to the Lord glory through God's name. Worship the Lord in the beauty of the holiness. The voice of the Lord is upon the waters. The God of glory thunders. The Lord is upon the mighty waters. The voice of the Lord is a powerful voice. The voice of the Lord is the voice of splendor. The voice of the Lord breaks the cedar trees. The Lord breaks the cedars of Lebanon. The Lord makes Lebanon stiff like a bear and out permanent like a young wild mouse. The voice of the Lord bursts forth in lightning flashes. The voice of the Lord shakes the wilderness. The Lord shakes the wilderness of Kadesh. The voice of the Lord makes the oak tree writhe and strips the forest bare. And in the temple of the Lord all are crying in glory. The Lord sits in throne above the flood. The Lord sits in throne and is king forever. O Lord, give strength to your people. Give them, O oh Lord, the blessings of peace. The second reading is from Acts, verses 14 through 17, and can be found on page 1001 of your Pew Bible. Now, when the apostles of Jerusalem heard that Samaria had accepted the word of God, they sent Peter and John to them. The two went down and prayed for them that they might receive the Holy Spirit. For as yet the Spirit had not come upon any of them. They had only been baptized in the name of the Lord Jesus. Then Peter and John laid their hands on them, and they received the Holy Spirit. Word of God, word of life. Thanks be to God. Please rise for the gospel. The gospel reading can be found on page 937 of your Bible. The gospel according to Luke, the third chapter. Glory, Glory to you, O Lord. As the people were filled with expectation, and all were questioning in their hearts concerning John, whether he might be the Messiah. John answered all of them by saying, I baptize you with water, but one who is more powerful than I is coming. I am not worthy to untie the thong of his sandals. He will baptize you with the Holy Spirit and fire. His winnowing fork is in his hand to clear his threshing floor, and to gather the wheat into his granary. But the chaff he will burn with an unquenchable fire. Now when all the people were baptized, and when Jesus also had been baptized and was praying, the heaven was opened, and the Holy Spirit descended upon him in bodily form like a dove. And a voice came from heaven, You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. The Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise to you, o Christ. Christ. You may be seated. My wireless mics must both be needing new batteries or something. So I'm going to stand here so that you can hear me a little bit better. I'm realizing this one's not working either. So, so today, um, Stacy, when she was reading, she read out of the Old Testament one of the most comforting passages, at least for me in the Bible, from Isaiah 43, that, um, but thus says the Lord, he who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. That passage is a go-to for me. Often if I visit people in the hospital and I'm not sure what else to say, that passage about God calling us by name, 
that passage about how God will be with us through the waters and through the fire and nothing can harm us, how we are precious and loved and called by name. And as we heard about Jesus being baptized today, and he heard the voice from heaven say to him, you are my beloved, you are my child, that sort of message of belonging to God and being so loved just because of who we are, that message is the message that Jesus received in his baptism, and it's also the message of our own baptism. It's the baptism message that fuels our lives. Over my time off, I was able to see I have two goddaughters. One is the daughter of my friend, and then one is my niece, and they're both really little. One is three, one is four, and it was just wonderful to see them. With Maggie, I got to go swimming, so we got to be in the water, which is like baptism, you know. And then my niece, I saw her when we celebrated Christmas. And I love being a baptismal sponsor. I think it is just like the most awesome privilege to have it be your responsibility to tell somebody over and over again that God loves you. God loves you so much you don't even know how much. And God calls you by name. You belong to God. So as baptismal sponsors, if you're a, a godmother or a godfather, <coughs> you know, that is your job, whether you're... God child is three or 43 or 53. You know, that's your job is to proclaim that your whole life long. I don't know that I always do the best job of it, but it's something that I feel excited about as their lives unfold, and I hope I do a good job of it. So when I saw my niece, Maeve, this past weekend, who is four, she kind of turned that role on me because she ended up proclaiming that message to me. And for a week, I've just kind of been reveling in that message that she proclaimed in the way that she did it. So I hadn't seen her in a couple of months. And when we arrived, she was really excited. She ran outside to see us. Um, and she was like, hello, Auntie Caitlin. She's never called me Caitlin before. It's always been Caitlin. So she just added this T. And all day long, she kept coming up to me and giving a, me a big hug and saying, I love you so much, Auntie Caitlin. And then when it was time for lunch, she made sure that her spot was right next to mine and nobody else was going to get to sit there. And her mom kept telling her that my name is not Caitlin. There's no T, it's Caitlin. But she just persisted, Caitlin, Caitlin, Caitlin. And at the end of the day, she gave me one last big hug. She said, I love you so much, Auntie Caitlin. And her mom said, her name is Caitlin. And she looked right at her mom and said, no, it's not. It's Caitlin. <laughs> now, you might chalk that up. She's four, but you, know, you might chalk that up to her being a three-nager. But I heard something else. When she said to her mom, no, her name is Caitlin, I heard, she's mine. And I heard something deeper, I heard. But thus says the Lord who created you, O Jacob, who formed you, O Israel, do not fear, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. And so she proclaimed my baptism to me. And it made me think about this relationship that we're all in with each other and how reciprocal it is and how we share this love back and forth in this community of Christ. And sometimes children do it better than anybody else. I have called you by name. You are mine. In the Lutheran Church, we often say as part of our liturgy and on days like this when we remember baptism, we say, remember your baptism. Did you think about that? And so many of us were baptized when we were babies. Why do we say that? Like, remember something that you can't possibly remember. Who remembers when they were a tiny baby and baptized? Um, I don't think any of us do. Some adults were able to be baptized as adults, and that's an amazing experience, too, or an older child, and they can remember it. But for many of us, we don't remember. And yet we say, remember your baptism. Well, one way that we can remember our baptism is by hearing the story of Jesus' baptism. 
how he went down to the water, how he entered the water, and how the heavens opened, and there was this voice from heaven which said, You are my son, my child, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. This was the beginning of Jesus' ministry. He hadn't done a thing yet. So he hadn't had any time to prove anything. God was just delighted in him and who he was, and he was the beloved. And in our baptism, it's also an echo of Jesus' baptism. That same <coughs> message is proclaimed over us. And sometimes we sort of um, make baptism a, like a really sweet thing, and uh, we... We water it down a little, no pun intended there, um, but we make it just about this, this grandma's baptism, right? Well, we're getting the baby baptized because grandma wants to. Um, but I think we forget that we're baptized into the death and resurrection of Jesus. And so this promise, which is wonderful and beautiful, is more than just a Hallmark card. It is the truth that will get us through the most difficult times. When we go through the waters, I will be with you. When you pass through the fires, you will not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. And for Jesus, when he went through all his trials, that voice was the voice that fueled him. It was love that gave him the courage and the strength. And for us, it is also the love that gives us the courage and strength, the love that's perfect, the love that comes from God, the love that doesn't fail as human love sometimes does. I have called you by name. You are mine. I heard another story about baptism this week, and it really kind of affected me, and I wanted to share it with you. So one of my pastor colleagues had spent time in Russia, she and her husband had, and they would often go to these outdoor Christian camps. And one of the things that often happened at these camps is there would be a baptism, usually of an adult. And um, they would baptize the way that Jesus was baptized. So they would go down to the water, to the river or the lake, and baptize someone. And there was one particular baptism at a camp like this. They were baptizing a man. And just down the river a little bit, there was a campground where some people were just camping. And as the man was being baptized, they were standing there at the water and they were making fun of the group who was baptizing this man. And so as he was coming up out of the water, he was hearing himself be called names and being heckled for being a Christian. Which is a reminder that we are baptized into Jesus' way of love, which is strange to some people. We are baptized into the one who was crucified and risen. And sometimes it isn't easy. Sometimes it's very difficult as we live out our faith to know the right thing to do or the right way to go. But we have been baptized, and that voice is always there for us. So this week, as we hear the story of Jesus' baptism, I invite you to remember your own baptism. If you are a baptismal sponsor, I encourage you to think about how you can reach out and show love to your godchild, maybe no matter how long it's been since you've reached out, and to claim that role again. And uh, remember your baptism, and maybe remember some other people's baptisms too. Oh, and I have one more thing that I wanted to mention. So I realize that as I talk about baptism, it might be that I don't know that there are people out in the pews that are not baptized. And I never want to give this message that you don't belong to God if you're not baptized. You already belong to God. But baptism can be a wonderful way of making your faith public and also hearing that promise and feeling that promise wash over you. So if you're not baptized and you would like to be, let's talk. Please rise for the hymn.
we welcome our new members. Dear friends, we give thanks for the gift of baptism and for these people, one with us in the body of Christ, whom we welcome as new members into the life and ministry of this congregation. In baptism, we are welcomed into the body of Christ and sent to share in the mission of God. We are called to live among God's faithful people, to hear the word of God and share in the Lord's Supper, to proclaim the good news of God in Christ through word and deed, to serve all people following the example of Jesus, and to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Sisters and brothers in Christ, sister and brother in Christ, do you intend to continue in the covenant of your baptism among God's people in this place? If so, answer, I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. I do, and I ask God to help and guide me. People of God, do you promise to support and pray for Keith and Marie and also our other new members who will be joining us in their life in Christ? If so, answer, we do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We do, and we ask God to help and guide us. We have to turn around because we're going to welcome you. Nice to see you. Let us welcome Keith and Marie and our other new members in Christ, some of them are watching online, to this community of faith. We rejoice with you in the life of baptism. Together we will give thanks and praise to God and proclaim the good news to all the world. And I've got a certificate and also, of course, envelopes. <laughs> Let's see here. I think this is the way that I can make sure I'm getting the right one. Thank you. 
In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread, gave thanks, broke it, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, This cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. And gather into one by the Holy Spirit, we pray as Jesus taught us. Our, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And we give us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil.
blood of our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ strengthen you and give you grace. Amen. And receive this blessing. God who leads you in pathways of righteousness, who rejoices over you, and who calls you by name, bless your going out and your coming in, now and forevermore. Amen. Um, and our final song is We Are Baptized in Christ Jesus. It's 451 verse 1. <laughs> Thank you. 